Hi, my name is Pete Beeman. I grew up in Portland. My studio and business are all based in Portland and I build everything uh, myself in my own shop there. My father was an engineer at uh, Ports and Waterways and my mother was a lot of different things, but one of the things she was was a woodworker and a furniture maker. I learned how to build stuff out of wood in the basement in middle school from her. When I went to college, I was like, ah, I want to do engineering, but I want to do something else too. I wasn't really thinking about art at all, though it had been sort of around me my whole life. Oh, that's some good looking concrete they got for us. And then I worked a bunch of different jobs building stuff. I worked for Keith Jellum, who is a big hero of mine, an old friend. He hired me one summer to be a quill boy to his porcupine man. That was my first experience with public art, I think, in some ways. He mentioned my name to a guy named Michael Curry when Michael Curry was opening up shop in Portland. And he was building a crew from scratch to build a bunch of giant animals for Disneyland. And we just jumped in building this crazy stuff. And I just learned so, so much about building things at scale, building things that are gonna move and be used and be abused by a public. That's part and parcel of what I do for a living now is build public art and it has to survive. After that, I uh, applied to a graduate program at Stanford. At the time, it was the only graduate program I had ever found that talked about both engineering and art at the same time. For me, it was just a chance to build mechanical sculpture, and I just ate it up. Pod, downtown across from Powell's Books in Portland, is the grown-up version of a piece I did at Stanford as a graduate student. And then within two years, I got the city of Portland to give me enough money, almost, to build that in Publix. When they were putting in the streetcar line that runs down through Northwest, they said, we want a project anywhere on the streetcar line. I was like, really? And there's that little traffic triangle across from Powell's, and I was like, that's so central and so public. For me, public art became important partly because of the pure joy and pure unexpectedness that I found when I stumble on something. Public spaces are key to a community. And I think that public art is a huge and key way to create those public spaces. Part of what I love about the Oregon coast is uh, Dungeness crab. And, uh, you don't see them there very often, but octopus. And they're just so amazing and such an awesome creature. And I know they're up and down the Oregon coast. Every time we go to the ocean side, we go crabbing in Neatarts Bay, cruising around the boat, picking up the pots and getting a bunch of little tiny rock crabs and maybe one good dungeness. And those are really strong bond feelings for me about those specific animals. And those are animals that are of that place. I love to build at this scale, this like 20 foot tall thing that weighs a few tons. A big part of what I do is design problems for myself to solve. Like I love to design a thing that I'm gonna have to figure out how to build. Done. Hey. I get great satisfaction from that. A lot of times on public art, the interest of the client is pretty specific. And often it's not unlike it was with Lincoln City. They really wanted something that would represent them. Wouldn't it be cool if people are driving down the road and they look up and they see this thing that, that looks like it came from the planet Donuts and just landed there and they're like, what the hell is that? Like my favorite response from people is a what the hell is that with a smile. And so when I went back with my first sort of sketch of the idea, which was probably like early CAD design, I went in assuming they were gonna be, well, it's a little too wacky and and they were like, oh, this is great, it's fun. Yes, we want something as fun as what you want to do. One way to tie it to Lincoln City itself was to include a local and who better than Kelly Howard, who is like the glass monster there. So she said, you gave us the patterns for the size you need and we're gonna make it happen. And they, it was like 36 hours later, they walked in the door with these two beautiful pieces of glass. As often happens, I'll have sort of my working name for a project. And then as I'm installing it, we'll shift it a little bit and it'll become clear sort of what the real name is. But my mom had died two months before and I was very close with my mom. Supporter my whole life, but also right there, getting her hands dirty and bloody 
just cleaning up sculptures or moving things around as needed. So that was in my mind because it had happened a couple of months before. My mom's childhood nickname was Poppy. And it just was like, oh, Poppy has the right sort of like feel just as a word for the sculpture. It was the last sculpture of mine that my mom came and interacted with in the studio. My sister picked my mom up down in her apartment and she came down here and we set up a little stand so she could reach it. Got up on there, gave it a little push and cracked up and made a joke and, and that was that. She's had her hands on my sculpture, so. So it really made sense to name it for my mother and to sort of dedicate it to my mother, at least in my mind. Did you get me confused with the sculpture for a minute there? The Lincoln City Project is nothing but fun and all the response is totally engaged and everybody who stopped by was super positive and doing what I dream of, which is like, what the hell is it? I love it, you know, like that's, I did nothing more that I asked for than that.